Hi, my name is Mike. Today I'm going to be making a video about replacing the vapor canister purge valve solenoid on my 2007 Chevrolet Colorado. The reason I'm replacing this component is because I'm getting an intermittent P0442 check engine light on the vehicle and also a occasional misfire. So what's happening is as part of the emissions control system on this vehicle the gasoline vapors in the fuel tank are brought back up through a uh, vapor canister system and returned to the intake manifold on the vehicle where they are uh, reburned to reduce pollution so if this particular piece goes bad it the system won't hold pressure and those uh, gasoline vapors will uh, go into the engine when they're not supposed to, uh, which can cause a misfire, and also the check engine light, which can affect your emissions in states that require emissions testing. So there's a lot of videos and a lot of information out there on uh, replacing the charcoal canister and the components near the fuel tank, but I couldn't find a whole lot of information about replacing the component at the front of the vehicle, which is on the driver's side underneath the intake. So first I'll show you the parts, a little part. It is, I picked up an AC Delco, part number 214168, GM number 12597567. You should be able to see that in this video. I got this on rockauto.com website. And I also picked up a bracket to go along with that. I didn't think I needed it, but it said, you know, may also want to include this, and it was only an extra like seven bucks. So the bracket, is part number ACD 12579283, GM 12579283. And that's the bracket that holds this little uh, the component in place on the side of the engine. Um, they also had an option if I wanted to buy a replacement piece of the wiring harness, but hopefully I won't need that. You'll need a few basic tools. For me, I use my Leatherman for just about everything. If you don't have one of these, I definitely recommend it. You'll need a socket wrench with a few extensions, a 10 millimeter socket, lug wrench, jack, uh, jack stand. Um, oh, total price for these parts was like $36 with shipping. Um, so jack up the driver's side of the vehicle, uh, remove the wheel. Then you'll also need to remove the fender liner, uh, this piece here. And that's held in place by one, two, three, four, five, six of these small plastic push clips. And I was able to just pry these out uh, with a flat screwdriver on my Leatherman. I'm sure there's all kinds of tools out there, but you know, flat blade screwdriver will pull them right out. Um, and that comes out around this area. So it gives you access, direct access to where the component is located on the driver's side underneath the intake manifold. You can see it there. Let's see if I can. It's a tight fit uh, from what up from my research I was able to gather that this would be a pretty tough thing to uh, get my big hands on to but you can see here's the piece right here it's held in place with this one 10 millimeter bolt attached to the component are two uh, vacuum hoses one at the front one at the back which are uh, held in place with those white plastic snap rings um, sort of like a little retainer clip and also it looks like there's one electrical connection on there as well at the bottom with that red connector down there so again this is the vapor canister purge valve solenoid and there you can see it in the bag it's upside down but it looks like it should go on right like that so Hopefully this won't be too difficult. The thing I'm most worried about is just getting my hands in there to reach those plastic clips. I know from doing the charcoal canister, uh, at the back of the vehicle, those white plastic clips can be very difficult to snap off, especially in uh, tight spaces. So first, I think I'll loosen the bolt, try to pull the entire assembly closer to me so that maybe I can reach those a little bit better. I'm going to pause the video while I do this because it's difficult to hold a camera and hold tools at the same time. 
we're starting the camera again. You can see I have now removed that bolt and I'm just trying to find any way to reach in here to that component that I can. It gives you not a lot of room to get to it even with the bolt out. Uh, there's not a lot of slack in those hoses. So I'm going to pause the video again while I try to get this uh, red clip and those two hoses off of there. There will probably be some cursing involved that I don't feel like being demonetized on YouTube. So I'm going to pause the video again while I struggle with the those three components, the two hoses and the red electrical connector. Starting the camera one more time. I was able to get that uh, electrical connector off as well as the top hose. Those turned out to be a little bit easier than I thought. That gives me a little bit more room to uh, pull it towards me as I attempt to get the remaining uh, vacuum hose, which is a little bit slightly different type of white clip. And it's a little bit harder to squeeze. So I'm going to pause the video again. I'll try to get this out. Maybe someday I'll be able to afford a GoPro or something so I can actually keep the camera on my head or something. It's always hard to do these car videos where you can't, uh, you know, point the camera where you want to. You know, if I put it on a tripod, it'd just be stuck sitting there on a tripod, which wouldn't really help when I needed to get it, like, in there so you can see things a little more clearly. Um, but hopefully someday I'll come up with some better ideas for recording these videos since I've gotten a lot of likes and thumbs up on them and they seem to be helping people. I'll keep making car videos then. Right, so here you can see the old piece and the new piece, the old piece at the top, obviously it's still got the bracket attached and the new piece is at the bottom. I'm going to use the new bracket that I bought since I already have it. It was only like seven bucks, so why not? So that second clip turned out to really be a real struggle. Um, let's see, where did it go up in there? So it's actually a push through style clip. I'm trying to get the camera where it can focus on this. So you can see there it is closed. And I'm trying to do this with one hand. But it pushes, let's see. It just sort of goes around it to hold it in place. Let's see if I can yeah. You can see that's how it that's how it opens. So a small little piece of this plastic snapped off, but not enough that I don't think it's going to impact what I'm trying to do here. These things are all tight enough, and I can always put a little Permatex around it if it seems like it's going to be a little loose after I'm done here. Oh, that second one is really tough. Designed by engineers and not mechanics. Is that is that the old saying? Sure make it harder to work on. All right, so I'm going to stop the camera again while I put the, assemble the clip onto the new one and stick it in there. And here we have the new bracket, the new piece installed. I wound up not using the bracket that Rock Auto sent me, even though it was a recommended part for this truck, because it was absolutely not the right piece. Uh, so I don't know if it's worth uh, going back to them to get my seven dollars back or not. But the old bracket, I was able to gently pry, pry it from the bottom. It's sort of held on by like a bent piece of metal that you can't really see from this angle. But I was able to get it off, reuse the old bracket, get the new one in there. I did put some uh, Permatex around this uh, left side hose clamp where it uh, snapped a little bit. And once that hardens, that should hold it in place. Um, don't tighten this bolt very hard. Uh, it's a very uh, lightweight um, bolt. You don't want the head to snap off. And this clip was real easy. It just popped right back on. And uh, this was a little bit more tricky because of the. it's hard to reach it. But... Um, I was able to get that electrical connector back on without too much trouble. So that's it. That's uh, the finished process. Um, I'm going to fire the truck back up, uh, clear any check engine codes. It usually takes about 250 miles for the um, EVAP system to fully go through its diagnostic tests, its OBD2 tests. Uh, if you have a good scan tool, you can actually monitor that. And I'll show you a picture of my scan tool, which I actually have a few of them, but the cheap one that I just throw behind the back seat. It's fine for basic tests like this. It is a Acton Auto Scanner. Part number CP9575. It's a few years old. I think I picked this up for, I don't know, 40 bucks at a local auto parts store just to um, be able to read my codes, reset the check engine light, and monitor the status of the OBD2. 
um, emissions tests. And it just plugs in right into your OBD2 port, which is right here. But that's a subject for a whole other video. So let me get this button back up before it gets dark. Fire it up. Hope everything runs well and I don't have to get any more check engine lights. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.